Educating, informing, serving. Fact TV, keeping government honest. meeting, uh, taking note of the fact this is a meeting of the uh, Wyndham Northeast Supervisory Union Budget Committee. Um, today is December 15th. It's 5.01 p.m. Um, adjustments to the agenda. I believe I heard that we need to adjust the agenda to appoint a chair, and I'm going to su suggest we do that immediately after communication and public comment if there's no objection. I hear an objection. Do we have uh, any communication or public comment, Chris? Um, I do not. Let me just double check. No, I have none. Okay. Uh, nominations for the chair. I'm going to place Jack Breyer's name into nomination. Are there other nominations? Uh, hearing none, I will declare <laughs> nominations to be closed and uh, I will exercise my discretion as the SU chair to cast one ballot for Jack Breyer as SU budget chair. Mr. Breyer, it's your meeting. Oh, Lord. Um, okay. So, um, the, obviously, the, the top topic of the evening is, uh, is, the, is the budget, uh, since we're the budget committee. And um, just in our brief informal chat before, the meeting started. Um, I was in communication with Chris Pratt, uh, and he said that uh, uh, he and his colleagues been working all afternoon on 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 this. Uh, no surprise. And uh, I think Flora has some material to present. I'm going to caution people that in these initial meetings, a couple things really need to be done. One is to sort of hear the broad outlines. Um, and since the real movers in budgets tend to be personnel as much as anything else, get at least that understood. And then hear sort of uh, goals of the members. Uh, I'm expecting, and I'm sorry to tell you this, that since we have these crushing timelines that um, until you overthrow me, uh, we're probably going to have another meeting within uh, the next 10 days. So uh, um, sorry, um, uh, you all have a chance to object now if you want. Point of, yes, point of order. Yes. Not point of order, I object. <laughs> in, 10 day, in 10 days, we have, the, we have holidays coming up. It's not appropriate to have to tell us that we have to ignore family in, in a pandemic. Instead, we have to focus on the budget. This should have been done some time ago, and I don't appreciate getting the numbers in the last minute. Thanks. I believe me, I understand. I just don't know what we can do given our timeline. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that when we come to uh, time of next meeting, uh, Deb, because I get it. So David, I see your hand up. I, we can talk about it at time of next meeting. It's my personal belief that um, nobody's going nowhere, and we could use uh, the uh, next two Wednesdays to try to catch up so that the local entities can get their budget work done. It's very much dependent upon the SU. Yeah, unfortunately. And, uh, uh, I, I do agree with Deb that, uh, that uh, it, work that I would normally like to have well underway in October is being dealt with now, but uh, we're, it is what it is as they say. Um, Forum? I believe this is your chance to uh, do. Oh, uh, Chris. Yes, please. Yeah. So I, yeah, I, I understand that you know we wanted to start this process earlier. That was our intentions as well. Um, it's it, we have been working on it um, today. Myself, Dr. Carey, Mr. Haas, and um, Flora, we worked all day on this budget. Um, we know we had a um, meeting the other night, or was it last night? I can't even remember. Um, <laughs> on the budget. So, you know, we went through it line by line. We really took a look at um, our revenues and um, you'll see a much different budget tonight than um, you would have seen even um, yesterday at this point. Um, so I, I would think that tonight is, is, is let um, Flora and I and Lynn and, and Mr. Haas go through this in its entirety. 
And then if there's questions, I'm sure there will be, but at least you'll have a big overview. And then know that then you can walk away from tonight's meeting, understanding what we're putting in front of you, have your questions asked. So when we do have another meeting, we can just get down, down to work. This is the, the first um, draft, as you all know, it's our first budget meeting of the season. Um, but I appreciate your patience. Um, as we all know, it's been a very hectic and busy year, and it was not our intention to get this information out as late as it did. Here or there, um, it is. And so um, I'm going to have um, Flora share her screen, and we can go over. Um, we tried to break it down as much as we could. Um, tried to anticipate from past years the questions we have. So, you know, hopefully um, it, it's very um, easy to follow. So, Flora, roll. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. As well, um, I apologize, but honestly, um, it's not one budget that we work. It's 15 budgets. We have um, nine supervisory union plus six schools. So it, it is a little time consuming. Believe me, I've been working seven days, day and night for the budget. So I did try to bring everything to you guys the most accurate and on time and, you know, adjusting one budget, adjust, you know, the other 14 ones plus. Um, so each of um, the tabs that we have here is a budget for each of the departments um, and bottom lines as all of the other budgets, I did color code it with um, salaries, benefits and miscellaneous. And then bottom line is the overall amounts for each of the years. Um, um, the complete data that I have is the budget for um, those years, but it has the revenues adjusted the amount. So an example here, if we see for FY21, the budget for um, food service is $931,000. When we are gonna match it with the um, complete data, the budget that was assessed to the schools was $754,000. That's because they took into consideration the revenue that the um, full service department get. So um, then for custodial, um, the budget, it doesn't get assessed the same way because custodial doesn't get grants. Same thing with the board budget, transportation does get grants. So the transportation budget, we're gonna see as well, the bottom lines are not exactly the same amounts that get assessed because we do take into consideration grants. So um, for the complete information for FY21 for transportation, the amount that was assessed was $931,254. And then for this year, it's gonna be 961,110. Um, the increase is 3%. Um, it's not really a substantial increase taken into consideration. As I have mentioned before in the other budgets that um, benefits did go up a 7%. Then we have um, special ed. Um, this was the budget that was a little dragging for everybody. So today we sat down, we um, did analyze and compare previous years of the budget bottom line, as well as the amount that we were gonna assess. Um, Regardless from FY21 to now, um, Andy did adjust his budget and it did went down. He made an adjustment in his um, miscellaneous. So in the complete information that we get um, for special ed, the portion that gets uh, was assessed on um, FY21 was 3.5. And then for this year, the amount to be assessed is 3.4, which is a variance of $87,000 of an adjustment in, their, in his budget. So he adjusted his budget at 2%. Um, so we have the technology department. Technology gets assessed 100% because we don't get grants for them. Um, early ed, we did adjustments for early ed as well because we do get um, grants for them. So according to the um, grants that we get for early ed, we adjust it. And then for early ed, the budget um, for last year that was assessed was $185,000 for $120,000. This year is $215,950. That's a variance of $30,000, um, but that's most likely we're gonna see that is in um, 
the benefits. So if you see all of this portion here is the benefits. There was a change from previous years to this year. Benefits did go up 7%, and that's something that um, we couldn't adjust. So right here for our benefits is $132,000 for this year. Past year, the benefits was just $108,000. So it's over $20,000 in increase for benefits. Um, for the business office, um, for the previous year and the current year, uh, our budget is most likely the same. Um, taking into consideration adjustments that we did in the office. Um, employees, we're switching them to salaries to cut down on the overtime that we were having. Um, as well, um, cutting the overtime, it balanced out as well the new employee that we got, which was budgeted in previous years. So if we take into consideration FY20 <laughs> to what we are requesting, um, FY21, we, our budget is actually going down 22% just by cutting away overtime and making our employees salary. And then um, for the superintendent office, we made adjustments and allocated employees in the areas that they were supposed to be allocated. Um, so that's why we're gonna see a decrease as well. So on um, the superintendent office, the parents is gonna show a 37% decrease. That is because of the adjustments that we did with personnel. So the system was showing um, previews like um, having two employees and um, a full extra body in the superintendent office that was adjusted. As for revenue, um, we did analyze all the revenues that we had for FY20 and that's what we took into consideration. So we do have um, the amount that was assessed for the towns. And here I have the disclosure of each of the towns the amounts that were assessed by each of the schools as well. And then for grants, um, this is all the amount that we get for grants. Um, the yellow area is the grants that we get just for special ed. That way it will match um, the adjustment that we did on the special ed department. Um, and then here we have the Medicaid grant that we get for early ed. That was the amount as well that we took into consideration to adjust the assessment for the um, early ed department. As well, we have here transportation. Those are the grants that we got for transportation the past year. And that's the amount that we adjusted according to that. And then we have on um, for food service, the amount that we got in grants and the adjustment. And then overall, this is the amount that we get between um, the towns and grants. And then I put in a separate line, the amount that we get for food service. Overall, between um, assessment from the towns, um, grants, and food service, um, the revenue that we get is 21.7. And then here is the overall information, the budget for FY21, and our budget, uh, current budget for FY22. Overall, we have, we have a variance of $611,000 that we're cutting out of our budget which is pretty good, um, taking into consideration that benefits did go up. So, and this is the variance between each of the um, departments, how much um, they cut down on their budget. And this is the percentage that each department takes into the assessments to complete 100% of the budget for the SU. So questions? Um, well, why don't we uh, do a round robin because that's usually my process and I'm going to start with Deb. What do you see? What do you, uh, what do you need to know here, Deb? I, I um, wanted to know if anything was adjusted considering the food budget or the high school budget based upon conversation yesterday at yesterday's meeting or the numbers identical from what we saw yesterday. No. So um, here in this tab, I had assessments. So these were the amounts that were assessed um, last year for each of the schools, which it was 7.1. And then um, this was the amounts for each of the departments that got assessed to the schools. So for this year, since our budget did go down, 
to 6.4, the amount that we're getting assessed to the school is totally different. So for the high school right now, we're gonna have a 1.8, which is definitely less than the last year that was 2.5. Um, Rockingham did go up a little bit. Um, and then the Union Elementary did went down a little bit. But yes, it is different than what we have um, assessed before. Is because this time we took into consideration all the revenues and adjusted according um, the revenue information that we got in the past year. This, this looks much more like an apples to apples comparison. Thank you. Uh, moving on, uh, David. Thanks, Jack. In the past, uh, the Department of Ed has furnished a uh, template for doing tax worksheets for, I realize we're maybe a little bit early in the process for that, but I am curious what tools you've gotten from AOE to help you with your budget. Well, I say tools, I'm also talking about data, what you've gotten from AOE to help you try to refine your budgets. So the data that I got from AOE was uh, information like special ed, the grants that they were gonna get, as well as grants from transportation. Um, they did um, share cost of pupil as well, but um, that's overall what we got. Um, according like town um, assessments, we do know it's gonna go up because um, um, Brad James had mentioned that already, but which amount it is, he still doesn't know because he did mention that he was caught up still with um, COVID relief funds grants that he's working on. So he did mention that most likely he will be able to um, share the information if it's not by the end of the year, maybe in the mid of January. Thank you, Flora. I have no other questions right now, Jack. All right, uh, Cheryl. Um, thank you. I, I am digesting uh, a lot here, including with the, the recent changes, but I'd, I'd like a little more explanation for uh, about how you're treating projected revenues and the extent to which, you know, on the one hand, we develop a budget based on expenses that we anticipate, efficiencies that you've described that have been added this year, which are great, one example being um, staffing that um, we haven't filled and that has assisted in some ways. But, but to what extent does this budget reflect the anticipated revenues? I, I'm, it's, it's my understanding that, that you're cautious about that and I want to know to what extent that's affecting the budgeting process overall. I'm sorry if I'm not being clear with my question. So um, revenue wise, that's why we just um, took most likely revenue from the previous year. We do always expect that we might get um, a higher revenue. Like we know that um, town taxes will go up because it has been mentioned already. AOE, uh, we had a meeting and they did mention it as well. Um, to which percentage is what they're not clear, but they did mention it will go up because the um, state needs to cover whatever they have invested in COVID funds. Um, so I did try to be conservative um, and just adjust most likely and do it similar to the um, past year, but not to a 100% extent. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you very much. Yeah, Cheryl, and I can add to that. That's where we spent most of our time today is trying to figure out, um, looking at what we got last year for revenues and what we can anticipate because we're well underway of you know applying for our grants and and seeing what the state's gonna give us and stuff. So like Fleur said, it's not 100%, but we tried to leave room just in case the, the state claws back some money here and there that we still have a budget that we can operate in. So it doesn't include all the revenues, but as much as that we can, that we feel it's, we're, we're very comfortable with. Like we are, we are sure you. that town assessment will always go up because right now it was mentioned already. Um, so I, you, I don't know if you see still my screen, so I do have here this portion, which is funds that we got for COVID. So it's COVID relief funds that we have, but I did not take it into consideration at all in the budget. But I did add in the budget COVID expenses because we need to um, understand that at this point, we don't know anymore if we are gonna keep getting um, any grants for COVID. But right. as well, we don't know if COVID is gonna be out of the picture tomorrow. So taking that into consideration, we still have to budget for any 
updates that we might need to do to the facility or PPE equipment that we might need. So we did put funds on the side. Each school has um, a line that is only for COVID um, expenses. So Cheryl, what you see there in the purple, we didn't reduce mm -hmm. the budget. You know, that's money we're going to have to work with, but mm -hmm. we didn't get out of the budget because we not we don't know. You know, we probably won't have that next year. So if we took that out of the budget, we'd be selling ourselves short. So that one point two, it's there. Yes. We'll use that, but it just hasn't been deducted from the budget because it's we don't know if it's a one time thing. But we do got it. Thank consideration you. budget um, expenses for COVID in case we still need to um, prepare any of those schools or, you know, make any more changes due to COVID or maybe anything else that might come that is not COVID. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to, uh, uh, Cheryl, did uh, your question been answered? Any follow up or? That, that's, that's good for now. Thank you very much, Jack. Lynn, I'm gonna put you on the spot next because you're on my screen. No questions, thank you. All right, uh, uh, Priscilla. You don't need to unmute yourself, Priscilla. There we are. Am I, un am I unmuted? <laughs> you are unmuted. Yes. Okay, um, on the summary sheet, what does HS stand for? Because it went from 2.5 to 1.8. Oh, the assessment? That's a high school. High school. But then you had BFU at uh, yeah, I think Rockingham. I'm not sure. They may have had it. So I have the high school. Rockingham, yeah. Rockingham and the Union Elementary. Oh, okay. So the Union Elementary went from 1.51 1 to 1.49. Is that yes. the one? Okay, I've got it marked wrong. That's why. Okay. Can you tell me why Rockingham may have gone up while the others went to went down? So uh, the reason why Rockingham went up is just according to the volume of students. So we try to um, take into consideration how the students are gonna go up or down. Right now, um, we do have a report that needs to be submitted to the state by um, January 15th. So going by the information that I got um, from the principals, is that I calculated um, the amounts that were gonna be assessed. So it's called the FY22 announced um, tuition data collection. So that is according to the volume of students. In so addition, in addition so hello, Triple E was, for, for whatever reason in the past, not, was it Triple E, Early Education Services was um, in, in the um, high school, part of the high school assessment. So it shouldn't have been. So we took that out so that, you know, whatever was in there got added to the um, the other schools because the high, the high school doesn't pay into, you know, early ed services. So that that was also added to the increase of the assessment. Uh, so we went up a lot last year. So to see us going up again, it's kind of, I don't know. Priscilla, this is a body count issue. So to some extent, uh, the more right. bodies you have in your system, the larger percentage of this you uh, end up uh, picking up as a cost. Um, I, will, I will do what I have done in, pa in the past when I've chaired these types of committees, which is since I think uh, uh, educational budgeting is one of the weirder forms of budget management I've dealt with, um, I am willing to uh, spend time with any member of this committee doing a one-on-one -on -one walkthrough of this material, because uh, both in terms of how it's structured and just to help people with, with bits and pieces, because I want our uh, staff, I want our administration to spend time on preparing it. I feel part of my job is to help with the education side of the house. I wish somebody had done it back in the first couple of years when I was on this committee. Uh, and I'll do that with you, Priscilla, or anybody else that wants to spend some time. That'll be helpful. And Priscilla, I did no, it, it's, it's logical, Jack. Thank you. Because it's volume. I understand. So Priscilla, I did put here a quick calculation. So from Rockingham from the past year to this year, I know you can only see the, the amount that were increased, but it's not such a big amount. It's just a $30,000 increase compared to um, the previous year. 
So uh, it's yeah, just it went up a lot last year. So I'm just, I just was wondering why. So we'll look at it. We'll look at it in more detail. I haven't had a chance to look at it before the meeting. So thank you. Like I said, it'll be helpful if I can too. George, you're up next on my screen. Uh, I've got nothing at the moment, Jack. Thanks. All right. And again, the offer extends you too, because uh, you're stuck with the chair of your board. So I can be helpful. Molly, what you got? I'm good, thank you. All right, I'm gonna walk to the uh, non, let's see, Deb, I've got, uh, uh, I see Jason Terry is on here. Jason, you, any um, uh, any thoughts, any questions? Yeah, I have a couple. Um, uh, Flora, on the revenue page, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, it's my first time looking at this. So. That revenue, that's from taxes that is being collected from uh, people in the towns, correct? Yes. So you have um, for Westminster, Athens, Grafton, and Rockingham. Those are the towns that um, we get taxes from. Um, this is overall how much each of the towns give us in taxes. And then this line here is just the amount that those towns give us in taxes for the high school. And then for the union elementary, and then Rockingham is the only town that actually gives um, their taxes either to Rockingham or the high school. All the other um, towns is just high school and union elementary. So you already you already have that money in hand? Not 100% of it. Um, the towns pay us, as, us the same way that they collect. So right now... Um, Go ahead. So we do have um, for Athens... It was a small amount, so they actually gave me the whole check. Um, the other towns have given me portions um, for each of the quarters. So right now I have collected two quarters for them. And then um, Rockingham, which was behind, <laughs> they did catch up. <laughs> I don't have to build them anymore. So with that said, if we don't have all the money in hand and with uh, COVID and people unemployed and people not working, how do we know we're going to get this money? And then how, how are we able to write a budget based on that? Uh, maybe I can be helpful with this, um, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. um, Jason, the way this tends to work is this is like any other billing. Uh, these are bills that are paid by the individual districts. And, and, and then as, as, uh, as uh, four has broken it out, uh, broken it out a second time, uh, both by district and by town. Uh, your, your, the Rockingham board and say the uh, high school board will, uh, will have essentially a, uh, a, an amount they'll present to the voters, which they will either pass or not pass uh, as is their pleasure. Once that has occurred, then it goes, then the collection of taxes goes to whoever your official is in, um, in your individual towns. Usually that's a, uh, so something your uh, town clerk uh, manages. And there's usually, at least in our community, there's a collector of delinquent taxes, should there be a, uh, somebody not pay. And uh, that's the process. Uh, yes, I've awarded towns and had conversations with several town, uh, towns in our district, alerting them to, the, to our concern about whether or not they've, they're gonna have trouble collecting those taxes. So far, the ones that I've talked to have been relatively successful. The delinquency rate in the, uh, in the towns of Westminster, Athens, Grafton, and I think it's still true in Rockingham, you can correct me on this, Deb, are, are consistent with what they've been in past years. And uh, at this point, I don't have a basis to assume that they won't stay that way. Yeah, so um, I don't know if this helps if you can see my screen. So this is how I invoice the towns. So um, since we, we do everything paperless, each time I get a check from them, I send them an updated invoice. So this is what we get. So um, whenever their payment is due, I have put that up as well for them and split it. Um, so which one is supposed to be your town? Well, I don't know if we can see the screen you're looking at. Uh, 
I, I want to make sure. Yeah. yeah. We we are it, 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 your presentation is no longer there uh, for. Okay. Uh, uh, oh, so Westminster is your town? No, she, uh, Jason's a Rockingham member in good standing. Okay. Um, let me share that. I don't know about good standing, but no, Rockingham member. Can you see it now? Yes. So yes, this is our envoys for Rockingham. Um, so since they were a little behind, that's why they have due date two times because we didn't get the first payment for them, but we did get their two payments already. So um, their next payment will be due in March and the last payment will be due in um, June. And that's how I split it for them. And then each time I, I receive payment from them, I adjust their balance and I just email um, this sheet to them so they know it's an acknowledgement, you know, that I did receive their payment. And you know that the amount does match um, what they sent and what, what what I have. David, I saw your hand up, so you want. Hold on, I had some more questions. Oh, well, I, I didn't know if David could help you answer. Oh, no, sorry. Go ahead. I, actually, Please. I was I was responding to your question, Jason. Towns have a statutory obligation to remit to the school districts, um, even if they have to go out and borrow the money to do it. Right. So the schools get paid. Um, and the taxpayers, one way or the other, end up paying for it, um, even if, it, unfortunately, it's to the delinquent uh, tax collector. Uh, Jack, I wanted to respond to what you said. Yes, yeah, that, thanks. I wanted to uh, help with this. Uh, yes, um, you, are, you are correct in that our town management and um, village as well have said that we are tracking at approximately the same as we have done historically over the last few years. However, there's been a, long, a lot of finger shaking from the select board and the trustees of the concern that we need to that we need to keep in mind as we continue budgeting. Because of course, you know, the town is already um, working on their budget for next year. Right. Now. And that's still a concern that, that, that the current pandemic will have an impact. We just haven't seen it yet. Uh, and I appreciate that, Deb. Uh, I, I, I've been ghosting your meetings just to kind of keep track is uh, what you know? What the tenor of the discussions are? Um, who have I, Molly? Did I talk to you? Who? who have, I'm missing somebody. I know I've not spoken to somebody. Anybody feel? If, I, if I've missed any of our, my colleagues, would you just uh, unmute yourself and tell me I missed you? Maybe not. All right. Um, we can go a second round if we need to. Uh, oh, I, hold on, Jack. Go ahead, Jason. You're yeah. You did have more questions. You go yeah, right ahead. Thank you, um, Deb. Thank you, and uh, David, and Jack, and uh, uh, Flora for for explaining. Um, I, I agree with uh, Deb. I, I you know I'm very concerned that you know the collections might be there now, but we don't know the impact it's going to have um, as we're still basically shut down in a lot of different areas. And my other question was how how do you get these numbers i'm assuming i just want to uh that you have numbers based on actuals and then you're just uh looking at the revenue and saying okay this is what we can afford but how do you know that we can afford those numbers now what the actuals are maybe the new actuals because of the pandemic should be much lower so if, if you follow what i'm saying yes yeah, so um uh, all I did was is go by what the state has actually mentioned already. Um, we do have to assess the towns. It's the town's responsibility, like Jack mentioned, to uh, pay the school district. That's why, you know, like for example, when we had a hold with the Rockingham town, it was their responsibility to see how they're gonna find the monies to pay the school district. Um, but all I could do is just go by the information that the state provide us. Jason, this may not make you feel better, I don't know, but um, on average in the years I've been on this board or been on boards here, you know, anywhere, but we, we've seen increases on the order of between five and seven percent with a remarkable level of consistency for years. And it's hard not to notice that this is a budget 
that has significant reductions, as did last year's in personnel, uh, a, a significant re uh, reduction in sort of in uh, Cherry Hill uh, numbers. Um, and uh, I, I know that in the guidance we got from Deb, uh, among others, what do you mean? Uh, the other day was to see what we can do to level fund this. And what I'm seeing is not only level fund, but a fairly substantive reduction uh, in, in the uh, in the gross numbers, the the expense numbers. Uh, and I would uh, again, I'm like I've said to you a couple times tonight. I'm willing to spend some time one-on-one uh, -on -one with you or anyone else to sort of walk through how this thing works. Because uh, I think for new members, it can be, there can be a lot of questions as to just how we get from point A to point Z. Uh, David, I see your hand up. Thank you, Jack. It's actually a question for uh, Jason. Jason, uh, are you actually raising what we might call the affordability question here, what taxpayers can afford? Yeah, and, and, and Jack, I, I will actually take you up on your offer to uh, learn more about this. This is my, you know, I've, I've been doing numbers for the last 30 years, and I'm, I'm I think I fairly good at it. Time. <laughs> um, it's, it's, what I, it's what I do. Right. Um, so I, uh, I, I am definitely raising the affordability question, and my concern is that just that 40% of the the people, you know, the family homeowners, there's 40% of the people are family homeowners in town and the rest is, you know, rental and, and whatever else. So it's, it's, it's going to be a tough year. So I'm just, I'm just very concerned. That's all. Thank you. Priscilla, I see your hand up. I can see hands up now. Uh, you'll need to unmute though. Yeah, I, that's why I'm fussing at myself. I said, I got to get me unmuted. Um, yes. I, and I understand that it's based on numbers and, of students in that, but it is very difficult as a Rockingham board member to go back and tell my, my people that yes, it's based on board members and all the other towns are being able to go down, but we're going up. So I guess what I would ask is if at all possible, if you could at least look at the numbers and um, see Flora and those that are doing it, if there's anywhere that you can cut so that we can maybe get, get Rockingham down a little bit too. I realize that probably has to be a cut in all areas or somewhere, but I would encourage you to see if you could possibly do that for us. So going by what we have right now in the budget, the um, areas that we could always cut is in the miscellaneous. Um, for example, for food service, you know, I know food service gets a lot of different grants and help. Um, so uh, there's always a possibility that food service get extra grants and instead of, you know, having $279,000 in food purchases, it could be lower than that. Um, and then, yes, it could be the adjustment of that $30,000 that you're looking for so we could just balance out, you know, the same amount that was assessed last year, get assessed this year. I'm going to post a suggestion. Uh, it's very hard in these kind of, especially in institutions, to change budgets by more than 3% without having to look at restructuring because uh, municipal budgets are, uh, there's hard obligations. You know, we can, the largest piece is, is, uh, is special ed. We can yell at, uh, at Andy and um, I'm always eager to do that when I'm not yelling at him to, uh, to increase services to an individual special ed uh, parent. But uh, the, 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 the monies we're spending here are what? Their transportation, their special ed, their food service. That's, you know, uh, that's the vast bulk of this. So the question then becomes, what can you do to, to either reduce expenses in those or increase, uh, increase revenue? Um, hard to increase revenue on buses, though you can reduce expenses on buses if we ever got around to sheltering the buses so they didn't rot out from the bottom. And that's something we ought to have a conversation about because if you want to save money on transportation, keep the buses from falling apart due to being parked on a muddy field in the back of the high school. 
you want to save money in um, in food service, uh, that might be a case where you start to let uh, let the entrepreneurial instincts of our food service uh, team um, actually free them up. And uh, I want to pitch, though I'm not going to, there aren't numbers attached to this, uh, restructuring that into a 501c3 might let, our, uh, might let Harley and his team do what they really are very talented and capable of doing, which is uh, generating some more revenue for themselves. And we need, to, we need to be thinking about how to do that. Um, again, you know, just saying that oh, the numbers are too high doesn't solve the problem. The, pro the solution is finding a way to change those numbers. And I'm going to suggest that even if we don't do it in this budget cycle, please, for the love of God, let's get it done for uh, the, the following budget cycle where we've got the buses either sheltered or set up so that they can we can extend the life of them or set up a fund that can be held so that we're not constantly crushed every couple of years and buying a whole bunch of buses instead of just one a year. And uh, let's see if we can get uh, give Harley uh, uh, his lead to go uh, go do what I think he'd do really well. Harley, I'm, I'm, I'm sticking you here and I'm seeing you sit there. You want to talk to this a little bit? Hi, Jack. Sure. Um, I apologize. I don't have my laptop, uh, so is, I don't have video. This on you. I'm sorry to do this. This is very unfair of me, but I just want to point out that I, you, you've talked about this, and I kind of like to let you be able to do it. Well, I am very excited to, to always look for alternative revenue streams. We had talked about the Meals on Wheels opportunities that might have come our way in the past. Um, you know, we're doing great this year. Um, we're really thriving in this strange, the strange circumstances of the pandemic right now, um, by serving meals um, to DCF through the state of Vermont, where they're paying us to, to provide meals to the homeless people. And that's a huge revenue generator. So um, I agree with you that attacking the, the budget, the, the most effective way to do that is to expand the revenues, not necessarily just to cut expenditures. Um. The, I will be bringing this back up. I plan to bring it back up for the SU board uh, in the fairly short term. Uh, I, I know everybody, you know, Lynn and Chris and Flora got their, and you had their absolute hand, hands full of day to day stuff. Um, big reason why the budget, we're doing this budget in December. Uh, but this is, if we want to fix the problem, we need to fix it. And this is a way to uh, get us in that direction, I'm thinking. So anyway, yeah, Cheryl, you get your hand up. So ask your question there. Thank, thank you. This is just a follow up to this. Uh, I'm, I'm catching up with this discussion of the possibility of a nonprofit being formed, of 501c3 nonprofit educational institution being formed to handle food services. And Harley, is, if you could say just a few more minutes about that, I don't know if this is something you've been thinking about. I'd love to hear a little more. I'm mean, certainly well, you know, for those who don't know, I mean, I've spent most of my career working in the nonprofit uh, um, arena, founding them and running them. So I'd love to hear what you're thinking, if, if this is something that's um, on your mind. On my bag of tricks, uh, advising startups is creating uh, advocacy nonprofits, if, if for no other reason than market development. I'm, it, it's you know it, it's on my short list of things I always go to when we've got issues here. Um, when we've got we've got what we can do is you can set up a five hundred one c three and have this board serve concurrently as the board of directors for uh, that five hundred one c three, and that way there's uh, there's continuity and. Uh, the state of Vermont allows you to do it, and so do most other states. Um, it's a great tool, uh, particularly if you're looking at things like trying to figure out how you maintain a cash balance, how you maintain money to go over uh, a fiscal year, because as you know, SUs are very limited in that, in that ability. 
Uh, it's a way to set up sinking funds if that's what you want to do. And I'm a big fan of sinking funds. And uh, it's, it's also a way to let, uh, let your uh, departmental units go out and be entrepreneurial if they have an ability to do that. And, um, you know, if, if we were, if we had one for food service, you know, everything I've heard from Harley for the last year and a half, last two, is how much he might be able to do if we could just let him. And the other one might be in transportation because uh, uh, we've seen how people overcharge if you're, you know, bluebird or whatever. And maybe that's a way of looking at uh, turning that into a model that's a little bit more self-sustaining. It would be a way for the uh, for us to be able to put money into a transportation fund rather than have to zero out every year and we get rid of this nonsense where we're having to buy a whole bunch of buses at the last minute uh, in a cluster every third year and we could spread it out over uh, you know six years, which would be really nice from my perspective. That, that's, you know. Jack, Jack, wait, wait, hold on a minute. Uh, that was all extremely helpful. My question was actually to Harley. And so I just wondered if he would speak for just a moment about this idea from his perspective. Hey, Cheryl, thanks. Um, full disclosure, I'm definitely not an expert in the nuances of nonprofits and all that that entails, but I can, I can speak to what we're capable of doing um, when given the opportunity a little bit, um, you know, I've always said that there are limits to how much we could put out because of the participation rates. And one of the things that has really changed the whole business model is having um, universal free meals um, that we have had since, you know, the COVID emergency school closure. We've seen our participation rates for students over the summer. Uh, increase astronomically, which has brought in a lot of revenue. And like I said, the alternative revenue source of providing meals for the state has just um, created a huge influx of revenue. And so it was really validating to see that we can do these things and we can do a really high output and um, have a much more successful business model when given some some flexibilities that worked for us in that way. Does that help paint a picture? Um, you know, our budget's going to be doing very well this year. Our revenue is, is much higher than it's ever been. And there's a lot of unknowns for sure. No one knows what's going to happen to the whole school lunch model as we know it, because we have been under an entirely new model since March. Um, and no one knows how that is going to play out on the national level and what's going to happen with free meals going forward. There's so much up in the air and no one has the answers to these questions. But what we do know is that given the opportunity to provide universal free meals, um, many more of our students uh, choose to participate in the meal programs. That's that's great, Harley. Thank you. And Jack, I understand this will be an SU agenda item. I appreciate one that you raised a possibility and that we spent a few minutes uh, getting a better understanding of, of what we'll be talking about at another time in more depth. So thank you. Yeah, this is a bit of a rabbit hole and I and I apologize to some extent, but I thought, you know, if we're gonna figure out how to how to achieve some of the goals of my members, I just wanna put that out there as a as a at least something to keep everybody interested. Um, all right, I'm going to just go around to see if there's any further questions uh, for this evening's evening. And like I said, I am perfectly prepared to spend time with you all one on one. And uh, for that probably means you too. Uh, we're going to spend a little quality time because I want to do some prep work for my for my colleagues. I appreciate, by the way, what if, this is. This was a really good presentation. This is what I wanted and I thank you for it. Let me let me walk you through uh, Lynn, uh, what, any, any other questions? I'm going to do a round round and then we're probably going to close it for the evening. I did have one question that came up on the revenue page when we talked about that. 
you have the Athens Grafton and they pay taxes to the high school and the Union Elementary. Yes. Mm -hmm. What, what, how is Athgraft associated with Union Elementary? Um, well, it's because they're merged and that's what we get from the towns. It, go, it goes together. Oh, okay. Maybe not if uh, maybe not if David Major has anything to do with it next year. But we gotta, one, by the way, one of the things I got to tell you is for uh, I'd ask for to keep those numbers separate. You normally wouldn't be doing that, and uh, but we did. We asked her to do it, and she has stepped up uh, so that our advisory commissions would have hard data. A lot of this is as much for their benefit as for anybody else's, and I I, I thank her for that. Um, uh, you uh, go ahead, Lynn. So Union Elementary, that's Westminster School. Westminster Athens Craft. Okay. Yes. So um, when we did um, the assessments, uh, we did split them, mm -hmm. but um, overall, it's just the full amount that gets pulled from the Union Elementary funds. Okay. Because when we get the monies, um, I don't get a check that actually is labeled Athens Craft. Yeah. Or, or Westminster, I get a check that is just um, labeled unit elementary. Okay, good. So Thanks. what you see here split is the towns, not the schools. Yeah. That's why when you see here on the side, it is the high school, the unit elementary and Rockingham. Okay, got and it. And those are the amounts that the, the elementary will get. Okay. So overall from everybody, the elementary gets 4.3. Mm -hmm. Uh, David, your your uh, your is your question answered? Um, uh, Chris, did you have anything further on that? All right, David. No, thank you, Jack. I'm fine. It was a good discussion. All right, uh, Priscilla. Yes, um, I think Flora said that miscellaneous was an area that maybe um, would usually have to be if it was gonna be reduced some, so maybe looking at that just a little bit and seeing whether it can be tweaked down just a little bit. I just wanna make my constituents feel a little bit more comfortable with this if possible. It's always been a big uh, item issue that the um, supervisory union budget is only voted on by the members of the, the board and not by the taxpayers themselves. So they feel somewhat like we are not taking as good a care of them as they, as we should sometimes. So just if we can do anything, I'd really like to. Thanks. I understand. And um, so I could work on um, looking line by line, um, each of the um, departments on their miscellaneous. Cause like I said, we did allocate COVID expenses. Maybe I could be a little bit more conservative in the COVID expenses. Um, thinking, you know, that maybe the bond number will go down. Um, so I could look into that. Um, honestly, Today, since I woke up this morning, I've been like thinking how we're gonna um, um, put everything together, how Jack actually had mentioned, take revenues into consideration. I am here in the office still because of that. Sorry about <laughs> um, that. And honestly, I apologize that I send it to you at 4.59, but I wanted to provide as much information as possible. And for example, for assessment, I wanted to actually to split your assessment for the last year by each of the lines as well, but it was a really time consuming, a lot of formulas. And I, w I just wanted you guys to at least be able to see the overall picture for this year, how we're gonna work it together and adjust it. And um, I think that what you're suggesting is just more than fair. So I'm definitely tomorrow looking into each of the lines for the miscellaneous. Just want to note that the, that e-finance doesn't allow for to do what she did for us tonight. She manually did all that. I, I, I Thanks, just want Laura. you to understand, nobody since I've been on a board has actually done what I've asked them to do for 15 years and four did it. Um, and I, you know, it's the first time you actually got information that's useful in these processes that a normal- And I with you for an hour and a half at the bank. Yeah. <laughs> um, George, what do you got, anything? Uh, no, uh, not really. Just a great presentation. And um, um, Jack, I likely will take you up on your offer as well. So um, 
you know, happy to do it. It's just yeah, we need to get you all, uh, you know, so that you can do this, and and I don't have to in a in a future year. Molly, what do we got? Um, I I'm okay. I I think the presentation was good tonight. Um, I feel a lot better than I did last night. Uh, I was taught by the Jim McCulloughs of how to read a budget, but the budgets that we used to see were absolutely insane, very hard to follow, you know, four or 500 line items. I was nervous when I was told I wasn't going to see that because it was what I was taught to understand. And, you know, after seeing what I saw tonight, I wish I never knew the other way. <laughs> um Jack, I'm always up for some education. If you got some time and you want to go through them, especially the high school, I'd love to do it. All right, uh, consider that a pledge, Jason. So uh, I'm sorry, going oh, by how uh, Molly mentioned um, the high school. So I would need to fix the high school assessments. Um, going by the SU. So if yeah. you look at the high school numbers when it goes to the assessment, they're not going to be correct today. All we did was trying to work out on the SU because the SU is the one that impacts all the other schools. Mm -hmm. So that needs to be um, corrected before we keep looking at the high school and stressing over it. All right. Jason? Sorry, Jason? I, I just would like to uh, acknowledge Harley uh, one more time. Uh, it's not really a question. I, I know he's being modest. I'm not sure if any of you folks have kids in the schools like uh, myself and George do. And I don't know if I missed anyone, but uh, he's doing a, a hell of a job for all of the kids and and, and doing it on a consistent basis. And uh, as a parent, I thank him. As a board member, I thank him. And, uh, you know, you know, without him and his team, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, we, we'd be in, in tough shape. So no question. Just wanted to Harley, thank you. Appreciate it. All right, uh, thank you. Uh, Deb? Yeah, you left the negative for last. Is that what you did? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I already, I already had set my, my position and I believe that that's what boards are supposed to do is give direction to uh, administration on how we are going forward with our budget. I believe that um, we should be very conspicuous about the contingencies because of a non-pass non raises I really believe that we should have a level funded budget as far as the school um, food set, uh, the school food portion is concerned. I have never been an advocate of raising the budget almost a million dollars or a million dollars to provide lunches, although I do believe in providing good food to students. I was concerned about the um, pilot program, which was 800 and some odd thousand dollars as it continues to creep up every year. I believe that um, one of the cons our concerns, which we have not spoken much of, is waste, food waste. And I know there's food waste because we pay for compost every month. A composting organization, which I believe we should be composting our own food and we should be composting that as a teaching moment for students. We don't do that. We don't grow our own vegetables. We don't do anything that would actually give class moments to students. We do everything else outsourced um, despite the food being local sourced, we spend more money with local providers because that's what they do. They have to charge more because it costs them more to grow the crops than it does for large corporate entities. And I understand that, but I'm still concerned about waste. So my bottom line is I believe we should have a, um, a level funded budget, if not lower. I am greatly concerned about what happens in the next, tech, in next year. I'm also an advocate of hoping that um, citizens would actually look closely at the budget. We have a thousand apartments in Bellows Falls alone. Those people are not paying taxes. They may say they're paying pa taxes passively, but the reality is the bulk of one single homeowners are paying the taxes along with Great River Hydro for our community. I believe it should be level funded. And that's the direction that I would ask our um, uh, office, business office to go in. Thank you. Thank you, Deb. Um, I see a, a, a Tara Darrell, and I haven't, I don't know who that is, and I'm wondering, Tara, if you just uh, introduce yourself. Tara's our note taker. She oh, oh, okay. That's fine. I, I just, I, I, it's not a name I've seen before. So, uh, hi, Tara. Um, all right. 
Uh, very good. Um, Carolyn, you have your hand up. Anything else? I just wanted to um, to share that we have written grants, Harley and uh, the, the team uh, at the elementary schools, and every elementary school has a garden and has received grants from the Agency of Agriculture, which has bought stoves and ovens and educational carts and food. And we have a farm to school um, education piece and we do grow our own vegetables, especially Westminster. They have a very huge operation, but Grafton does as well. And uh, we're branching out this year in, with Central and Saxons River. Uh, that's in the works as we speak. So we are growing our own vegetables and we're teaching with them and we're using them in the kitchen. Um, Thank you, uh, Colin. I know that the uh, that the prospective building for the uh, for for the uh, headquarters of the SU has a has has effectively a blueberry farm in the backyard, uh, and uh, the high school has a square mile of land that I have one, uh, about a third of which could turn, be turned into uh, productive uh, productive uh, uh, food growing if we ever get around to doing it. So. I, I think it's a legitimate question, Deb, and something that maybe we need to get more aggressive about in the coming year. Uh, I, I thank everybody. I, if there's any further questions, uh, shoot them now, Deb. Uh, yes. Carol? Yeah, thank you, Jack. I do have one. I, I, um, one quick comment to Deb. The composting has been a challenge given the volume. Uh, you know, certainly we've talked about it a, a good bit in Westminster and don't have that solved yet. But the food growing, as Lynn just said, is uh, improving and, and gets to be a more and more integral part of the curriculum. My question, Jack. Uh, Cheryl, you just went mute on us. I don't know why. Cheryl, you're still mute. Can you fix that? Back. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, thank you. Um, my question is, with your generous offer to do all of these one-on-ones, I wonder if you might start with just planning an informational meeting, you and Flora, where all of us who are available and are interested might sign up for the first kind of let's walk through it, and then you might after that um, do additional one-on-ones. But I just think there are enough of us that would like a more detailed um, walkthrough of the budget that we might start with a group meeting only focused on the details of understanding the budgets. Just the process rather than the content. Uh, let Correct. Me, let me check with the floor because I know it's, it's only six o'clock and she's got another six hours left before the day ends. But um, uh, we, we, I'll have that conversation with her and see if we can figure something out because I'm realizing that I get a lot of phone calls otherwise. So um, point taken and I thank you for making it. Oops, I got to deal with this. Hold on, sorry. My daughter, my daughter, my daughter and granddaughter want to talk to me. Um, so, if there's anything else, um, I, and I'm gathering, maybe not. Uh, we, I entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, David. So, so moved, Jack. <laughs> um, all in favor. Um, uh, say aye and go off and have a nice evening. <laughs>